Okay. So, um, so yes, I'm glad that we, we went over those, those areas that are important because in order for us to have intimacy that we can continue that this is the whole purpose of Titus two is that we pass this on, whether it is friends or in your case, your children, or in my case, my grandchildren and my children, of course, and, and your uh, church. <laughs> Right. And how we treat each other in our house church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we can do that and set, and set a precedent to do it right from the get go, then it just it doesn't, you know, that uncomfort, uncomfortableness. I don't even know how to say yeah. that word. Yeah. Disappears because right. it becomes a norm. We right. all treat each other that way. That's just a normal way to to do right to, in life. You set a standard and you set the tone in your home, in your family, with your friends, with your house group, like one, even people who maybe aren't used to that way. I mean, I've been to your house church, so I can say this, like you come into Simi's home group, her and Keisha do a great job of setting this tone of like, we're going to stay on task with the sab. We're not going to go dilly dallying off topic of you know, things that aren't of God, uh, they keep it on task. They have their boundaries set, but they also have it open. To, you are safe to ask any question that you have on your heart. And we are going to, you know, dig it and midrash it out and, and get to some kind of a understanding. And it, you know, it's a safe place. So like mm -hmm. we, it, it just goes to show how important it is how we carry ourselves and yeah. how we treat other people, it sets the tone around us, you know, like our little bubble of, and I'm going to call it a dignity bubble, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and it is actually grace because yeah. yes. you know, grace is, it's been misused the word, like what is it? Some people call it sloppy grace or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that is just like, Oh, everything goes because, you know, just give me some grace. I was like, okay, um, mm -hmm. that is not what he did. His blood was not just like, uh, just nothing, you know. That he his his sacrifice. He he walked all the Father's will, you know, and all the commandments and everything for us, so that we can follow him. That was not just nothing. It actually took everything in him to the point of sweating blood when he said may right. this cup pass by me father and he, but i'm willing to die for the bride you know that so we need to understand it's not just like you know this grace is just something that we just throw out there no um it is valuable it has it, it had a Perfect. cost mm -hmm. it was not free in that regard so but also um, you know, going back to day six, we, we know man and beast were created and we've talked about this in, in our other months that we, we went through body, soul, and spirit. So when we did body and soul, we talked about how, if, if I don't feel safe, if I don't feel love and connected, then fear grips my heart. And I will be like a beast. I will scratch. I will bite. I will be mean. I will be everything that I shouldn't be <laughs> because I'm not able to reason. I'm not mm -hmm. able to apply logic. So being six and talking about day six is the spirit of knowledge, which is intimacy. To know is to be intimate with. Then if I am intimate with the father then the way i conduct myself would be with reason with logic with order with kindness with dignity with respect with cherishing you you know all the things that he would do right right but if i am walking in my flesh in my beast like i would be everything opposite. the opposite of everything I said before right so thinking about that and knowing that that has to happen first 
in order for day seven to arrive. And day right. seven is reverence. Mm -hmm. The last enemy that the father will destroy, and I hope is sooner than later, Amen. is the fear of death. And the fear of death takes us into this day six, uh, day seven, which is um, Dr. Um, Rabbi Foreman also had a great um, teaching on the prayer of Hannah and how she, you know, she couldn't have a baby and she's praying and Eli thinks she's uh, drunk because she's moving her lips, but nothing comes out of her mouth. And so he took apart the prayer that Hannah did. And when you take it apart and you see how she addressed God, there were three things that were important for us to, you know, emulate, learn from her, glean from that prayer. And number one, she talks about God being the master of the universe, the king. And that's what we are crowning him in a few days when we have Yom Teruah and Yom Kippur and Sukkot, it is the coronation of the king. It is, if he doesn't come back in this year, then we are rehearsing that another year again, that he is the king. He is the master of the universe. He is someone totally separate than us. He's not like us at all. We are more like him, but he's not like us. <laughs> he's totally different than us. So uh, that was the number one in her prayer. She acknowledges who he is. And actually, he makes a point that was really interesting, how she's talking about him. She's not talking to him. She's talking about him. So it's like me telling you, oh, our father is awesome. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is master of everything. So, But I'm still talking to you about him. But then when it goes into the second part of her prayer, then she changes to a personal. She, I'm not just talking to you anymore. I'm talking to him. And you are my king. You are my God. You're my redeemer. You are my rock. So then it becomes this personal relationship. And then this personal relationship goes to the third one is, I trust you with my life. You know, that this relationship is so intimate, so tight, so, so much, you know, that I don't care about anything anymore because I truly believe everything that I'm saying you are. And then I'm telling you, you are my redeemer. Then I can just totally trust you. And mm -hmm. I love when we were talking about this, Mary Kay, that you brought the relationship with your husband. Can you speak into that? Yeah. Well, and it's cool too. I was, as you were saying that, I was like, you know how um in the Psalms, David's like saying things to his soul. It's like, mm -hmm. relax the Lord, oh my soul. It's almost like Hannah was speaking to her soul, reminding herself mm -hmm. who the master of the universe is. And it's like, she took herself to the place to then remember and then be able to, from that place of remembrance, like pour out this true, genuine prayer from her heart. Like, you are my king. Like, oh, yes, you are my king, you know? And then like what you're saying, oh, it's like it, she hyped herself up to be able to like get to that place. And I think I I have to do that for myself. I mean, I've, we've talked about this uh, mm -hmm. where we, you have to remind when we're always the the scripture are always saying remember right but it's not just like a mental thing it's also like an action and mm -hmm. I love that like as you were saying that it just kind of like I yeah. don't know I was picturing it more but yeah. we were talking about your face <laughs> yeah but we were Simi and I were talking about should we take it off of this uh paper now so it's just me and you or oh yeah you can stop this um, it's so funny because the whole time I've basically been looking at your tiny square because I always I'm like talking to you. <laughs> There's this huge piece of paper. But we were talking about even the word um because it's the fear of the Lord is the last one. You, at the beginning you said the fear mm -hmm. of death, I think. <laughs> uh, no, the last one is the fear of death. He will destroy oh, the that's fear what you were of saying death. Will, will be destroyed, not okay. Destroyed. 
Because mm-hmm. the spirit, we were saying the fear of the Lord. And I'm like, oh gosh. Oh, gotcha. But we were talking about how this is a hard phrase, um, the fear of the Lord. And even like, you will respect me. Because I was telling Simi, I'm like, you know, a lot of times people hear that in a really negative tone with their husbands or you know, like if they're not in a healthy relationship with their spouse and it's like, you need to respect me. Or we even have said that to our kids where it's like, you need to be respectful. And it's like, mm-hmm. I told Simi, I was like, I like looked up the word and you know what it means is it means to cherish someone yeah, or something. And you cannot force someone to cherish someone we can't force someone to respect someone so if there is a a a breach in that ability to respect someone something there's a breaking in that relationship somewhere that's caused you to not cherish that person any longer Mm -hmm. um but with god it's like let's explore that too because I, i am thankfully in a marriage where i do trust and love my husband and so i'm like if I'm supposed to kind of like look at God as that, um, his bride and he's my husband, like I'm not going to tremble and fear coming to him about anything. I don't, I'm not afraid to approach my husband about anything. In fact, I'm, I mean, it's like so vulnerable. There is no topic that is off the table, you know, and he would expect, he would expect that too. Like it, it, there's been times in our marriage that I was sheltered or not sheltered, but like ashamed of certain things. And I'd be like, no, don't, you know, look or whatever. And, and he would work through that with me. Like, but we're married. Like, you don't have to, I'm, you don't have to worry about that with me. We're married, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, duh. You know, <laughs> like I know we are, but I still, I feel weird too, blah, 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 you know, whatever it could be. And, and, and in a a healthy relationship, it should look like that ebb and flow or what Simi likes to call it a dance of like, Oh, I'm scared to talk to you about this. Well, you don't have to be afraid to talk to me about this Mm -hmm. because I'm never going to leave you. And it's like, okay, well, if you're never going to leave me, I just want to say this. And it's like, (laughs) Boom, boom. And it it should be this way. And and the two should be able to flow and be this respect, this reverence, this awe is more of a looking up to like, like now I can I can genuinely say, like I look up to I was just praying about this three hours ago. I was like, God, I, I look up to Brit so much. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I look up to my husband. He is so steadfast and he does not, um, he doesn't harbor like hurts I, I, as a woman. I think maybe I do, um, or maybe it's my personal makeup, but I have to work through them. And he just, he works through them with me, but I'm like, wow. Like I look up to my mm-hmm. husband. And that's the kind of love God wants yes. from us, and he will not force it on us. He will right. not. He wants true love and he just wants to dance with us, you know, and he doesn't want it to be stepping on toes and painful. Or forcing he, you. And yes, he wants it to be quarreling you. You're like, ah, no. Yes. Yes. He, it's intimacy. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we could never experience ever in any other form or fashion. And so sorry to be emotional, but that's what he wants from us. And that's Simi and I were talking in order to enter into this. It's like these earthly relationships actually affect that ability to come because he cherishes his children. And so, you know, for us to learn to cherish and have compassion like he does, it just furthers our intimacy with him, you know, like Yes. Being able to tap into his heart and that heartthrob that he has for one, for us, that, that we would have that same heart for one another, you know? Right. Yeah. And if you think about it, you know, that going back again to this Titus two, he has called us to teach uh, older women, teach younger women to love their husband, to love their children, to, yeah. so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Amen. So we have to go back to that and let's 
let's play it again. So yeah. let's say I'm Eve. So at the moment that I hear the father walking in the cool of the day and I'm like, and I'm naked. Oh no. And I have to run and hide and, and cover myself. Why? Because I didn't know I was naked while I was covered by mm -hmm. him. Yes. And the moment I disobeyed, my eyes were opened to the truth that I was always naked. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like before I was dressed and now I'm naked. No, I've always been naked, but his covering, his light was on me. And it it didn't let me see my nakedness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... At that point, what if instead of me running away and hiding and covering myself, I would have come before him and said, oh, father, I did what you asked me not to. Right. I'm so sorry. Going back to my three things. I know this hurt you because you told me not to do this. I know I'm going to die because you said the day you do, you will die. I don't know what that means, but I feel awful and I don't want to do this I I promise I'm, I'm letting go yeah. yeah I'm not going to disobey you again please forgive me and I commit to do my best to not disobey you again and please help me dress mm -hmm. me up I, yeah. I feel so shame and 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 guilty for disobeying what if that conversation would have taken place instead of me hiding and covering myself so that's all he's after because he who overcomes we go back to revelation 19 7 we've been repeating all this year it's like the bride is making herself ready i don't want my rags i don't want my fig leaves to cover me i want his righteous li white linen beautiful wedding dress that he purchased to, it's at such a high price for me to wear it and walk with dignity and respect mm -hmm. knowing that i am loved and cherished by him and there is nothing i have to add to that dress that dress is perfect it fits me beautifully. It covers everything that needs to cover. It is, I am the most beautiful that I could ever be. There is nothing I can do, color, cut, lift, tuck, <laughs> no makeup, whatever I think ah! is necessary <laughs> for me to be beautiful before him. I don't have to do any of that. I just have to be totally in love and abandon and trust him to be everything he ever wanted me to be. And at that point, then his word is honored again. Mm -hmm. And that's all he's looking for is mm -hmm. that we come and we say, I go into the past and I know what I've done. I'm in the present and I'm letting it go. And I look at the future and I don't ever want to do that again. And I come before you, Father, and we talk face to face. That's what intimacy is. Panim, panim, face to face. And I say, oh, Father, cleanse me. Mm -hmm. John 1, 9, when I repent, he cleanses me from all, not just some, all unrighteousness that's all we need mm -hmm. i we, love that 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 like what you said in our our titus 2 verse it literally says that to teach us to love our husbands love our children you know so that we don't dishonor god's word i mean mm -hmm. so when like what well, if we go all the way back to the beginning of this conversation when we we're talking about operating this dignified way where we value someone else mm -hmm. we value them enough to give them the best words we can give them. We value them enough to take care of their belongings. If we ever borrow anything from them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when we aren't doing these things, these acts of love toward one another, we're actually dishonoring God's word. And it's like, why do we do any of the things that like, especially in this Torah community, it's like, why are you even doing any of this? Mm -hmm. Well, at the heart of it, you're trying to honor God. And it's like I said, you know, wearing your zit and all these things, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, if the weightier matters of how you're treating other humans 
is being neglected in the, ne- in the name of like, oh, well, I'm getting down my, that's like what Jesus said when they were fighting about the tithes and, or whatever. And he was like, you're, he was telling the Pharisees and stuff. He was like, you're tithing them on herbs, but you neglect the weightier matters, which is to show integrity, to have mercy and to love, to love one another. Like literally those were the three things that Yeshua himself. And it's like, if that love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord, your God with all your heart, like that at the heart of all that we do, it's about love. Like that love is the anchor, you know, that's in Timothy, you know, it's like <laughs> our faith and our love. Like it's all that's, if, if you don't have that, there's nothing, you know? And so, man, we bring so much honor to God when we actually take this serious. The, the, and I think it's so easy because, oh man, there's so many things in life. It's like stressful, you know, <laughs> like we were just this little, little things like, oh, I'm selling my house. It's stressful. And, oh no. It's <laughs> like, that shouldn't cause me to be rude to anybody. You know, if, if at the forefront of my mind, if I really am focused on why I'm even here, <laughs> what the purpose of life all is. It's not about that or even like homeschooling or whatever. Like there's so much that could be super stressful, but like the whole purpose of a living is to bring honor to God. And he himself says, well, when you honor me, when you, when you treat others with love and cherish them, not like mm-hmm. respect, but I know that word's been twisted, but when you respect that, when you cherish them. And I've actually had to work through that, you know, like learn, like I've actually asked God, uh, please help me to like, even my own children, (laughs) I've had to ask him like uh, some of the trauma that you go through. And then you realize you want to dissociate from that child because of the trauma that you went through with them. And it's hard to find this lovey bubbly joy again. And you're like, no, I'm God, please help me to remember that and to cherish this life because you do. I mean, it's okay to be raw with God and say, I don't cherish this person. I don't, I I don't respect this person. They hurt me so bad. You know, not my kids, but like my, you know, my dad, I was like, you hurt me so bad. I have a hard time respecting you, cherishing you. And it's like, God help me to cherish him that you can do that. He, he can do that in you. <laughs> Yeah, we have to open that door to let that healing even come in and recognize like I am actually not cherishing this person. You know? Right. And you know what I love about uh, Rabbi Foreman, the way he's talking about that prayer that um, Hannah was having that that moment of crying and just um, being totally real with God in her feelings he is by the words that she's using he says she's not only letting him know oh i want to have a baby you haven't given me a baby she's angry at him yes so and he is okay with that okay. i'm angry at you why did you do this to me why have you yep. you see me suffering and you let me suffer mm-hmm. why we can do that our daddy is that loving towards us we will not you will not put him away you know we will not um bend him out of shape by our rawness he wants us to be completely completely open with him and he is okay now he is someone that i can just burst (laughs) and and do that and he has me before (laughs) and he he knows how to handle it (laughs) He knows how to handle it. And he has before me too. He can, he knows how to, to, to handle me. He knows if he, I, he needs to be just shut me down because, okay, stop it right there. Well, We're and it's like you there. said, he is not like us. So <laughs> we get offended and all whatever. He's not like us. No. We're like him and, or we can be like him. And so, I think because we compare him to human interaction, because that's all we have to compare him to, like some of us who may have had parents who would lash out at us if we so much as express one little thought, 
might feel really timid to come to God with a real raw thing, but man, will he respond with exactly what your heart and soul need needs. Yes. No matter what. So I actually have a friend who just shared that about her journey that she l- finally just lashed out at God and just let it rip. And he responded to her with such tenderness and kindness. And it broke every wall mm-hmm. in her because she, she was expecting to be reprimanded. And it's like, well, forget it. I'm out of here. You know, like, I don't, but it was the, it was like the, for, for once she was finally so raw and genuine mm-hmm. showed at least one raw, genuine moment with him. And he just lavished her with love. And then now it's just totally changed her life. And I'm like, I totally get it. I totally yeah. get it. He's the one source that will never turn his back on you. Even when you're the ugliest, because that's what a true husband is supposed to you know, like our true heavenly husband or true heavenly father, our true creator. He is all yes. the need in the one that he is, you know? Amen. And let me close with this because we just have one minute and then we can talk a little bit more after the recording. But one of the things that he uh, brings about how much he is there for us, and because he said so, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I thought, you know, what would be the thing that all of us, good, bad, evil, you know, anybody can actually say it is the breath of God is what keeps us alive. Mm-hmm. And every time when we did the the month of sleep, we talked about that. When we literally fall asleep and we go into th- uh, delta waves, our brain literally almost flatlines. Mm-hmm. And it is the breath of God that it goes back to where it came from and then is returned to us when we wake up. And that is something that every single human being can say that if you're still alive, God has allowed you to live one more day and you, his spirit breathed in you again. So we can say, if we're alive, that at least I can say this in 63 years, he has met me every morning with his spirit back. <laughs> he has returned my spirit back. Every morning I wake up and I breathe again and I say, another day. Thank you, Father, for this day. Yeah, whether so, you recognize it or not, it's the truth. Yeah, that is the truth. Whether you think you could exist or not, you are living because his breath is in you. And with this, we want to close this year. And we are so thankful. All these recordings will be in the library. You can go back and listen to them. And um, I hope it has been a blessing to you.